Serious lawyers, what's a case you regretted winning? Family law is a little different, in that you never really win per se. You may get more favorable rulings or better terms, but unless the opposing party did something illegal or mind-bogglingly stupid it's never a decisive win really. Although I did have a case, where my client fought really hard for the dog, and then ended up turning him over to a shelter. Fucking asshole. The ex-wife, received an anonymous tip, and was able to get him back quickly. I don't want to give away details, because of where I work. But I will speak broadly about something, that may or may not have happened. There are attorney guardians at Litum, Gal, who represent the best interests of children who have been adjudicated to be abused, neglected, or dependent. Dependent means that the child is dependent on state support. Think of both parents tragically passing without other family members. Part of the job is making recommendations to the court about when and in what manner children should be reunited with their parents after parents engage in services to prevent an incident from happening again. The child was abused. The parent did services for a year. The gal recommended the child be returned to mom. Mom killed the child about a year later. That was a pretty sad one. Prosecuted a murder case. 21 year old kid starts dating an older guy's ex-girlfriend. The older guy, real Rowneck, loose connections with a local biker gang, was going all over his small town talking about how he was going to kick the kid's ass. The older guy sends some nudes of the ex, while he's getting drunk at a bar, so the kid says something smart ass in response. Older guy comes to the kid's house to fight him. The kid shoots him once, and the older guy dies. Jury didn't buy self-defense or castle doctrine. Convicted of voluntary manslaughter. 20 years. Burned up his appeals with no luck. I have a son about the kid's age. I could totally imagine him doing the exact same things, if he were in a similar situation. Shit's going to haunt me until I die. No doubt about it. Started thinking about other work the moment the verdict came back. Women wanted her daughter custody. We use the state preference about custody going to the mother, judge bias, her improved economical situation, and some minor garbage like her grades and discipline problems at school to discredit the dad. Not even a month after we won the mother course and says she had a problem. Then she explains the problem was that her BF raped the girl and after that she had the gall to ask we pick up his defense. One of the things that made me quit to gov work was representing the government at a social benefits tribunal. The applicant was an autistic man who was struggling to make ends meet, but was trying his absolute best to contribute everything he could to society. He had a job, where his manager was very accommodating, and he was a very sympathetic person. He just wanted the extra cash, to make his life a little easier for himself. Sadly, he didn't qualify for the benefit, but I think he deserved it. My closing argument was that no matter how much we empathized with this man, no matter how deserving we thought he was, he simply didn't qualify, and the tribunal had to apply the law. He was unsuccessful, and when I left the building to head back to my office he was just sitting outside on the curb crying. That image has stuck with me for a few years. Pretty heartbreaking. When I did medical malpractice defense work, and won a motion for summary judgment against plaintiff's family and estate of the deceased daughter. Family brought 9 year old girl to the hospital, because she was very ill. In the end, the daughter died in the hospital with ruptured appendix. Doctor, who was not at hospital at the time, kept calling in, because it was middle of the night, checking her vital signs. He never came to hospital because he believed, wrongly, disputed by plaintiff and defendant experts, that she did not need surgery. By the time the family actually saw a doctor over 24 hours later she died of septic shock. Plaintiff's expert stated it was clear that she needed appendix taken out, and if seen by a physician in timely manner, a routine surgery to remove appendix would have saved her life. I did some custody work early in my career, and won some cases more on the merit of my trial skills than on the merit of the parents. The thing with family law work in general is that there is essentially no bar to entry. Anybody with a law degree and a pulse can get a family law practice up and running quickly, because there is just an absolute glut of work. What that also means is, that 75% plus of the lawyers practicing family law are clueless and awful. Early in my career I certainly was clueless, but at the least I was not awful. 
Therefore, in a battle between Clueless plus AWFUL versus just Clueless, Clueless usually won. So yeah, I can't recall any specific cases, except to say, that fighting over children in court, is a terrible thing and basically everyone loses. I regret that entire portion of my career. There was a case, that I saw, that involved a claim with fee shifting, meaning that if the plaintiff won, their attorney's fees would get paid by the defendant. Defendant pushed an aggressive legal position at trial, that the judge agreed with, and won avoiding a few thousand in liability to the plaintiff and a few thousand in attorney's fees. So far so good. But then the plaintiff appeals all the way to the state's high court, requiring a ton of briefing and time. High court agrees with plaintiff, reverses and sends back to the trial court, which now enters judgment against the defendant for a few thousand in damages against the plaintiff and tens and tens of thousands of dollars in attorney's fees from the appeal. The defense lawyer probably regretted winning at first on that aggressive argument to the trial court. In the spring of 2018, I was a third year practicing intern at a public defender's office. As the job entailed, I dealt with a lot of clients who were facing time, but none really blew my mind than the following. Sometime in that spring, I got up every morning as usual, drove to the office, located in a building with the courthouse, and picked up the files for the for the supervising attorney. I did this because I liked having the exposure with other attorneys, whether prosecutors or defense counsel. On this day, a file was scheduled for a probation violation hearing. I looked over the file, and the client had three years of probation. I found this very odd due to the initial charge, possession. Regardless, I thought another one because, as awful as it may sound, it really was another one. It wasn't the first PV, and wouldn't be the last. Even so, I go to the docket call, case is called, I say attorney, we move on. In the same room, our pose, their office located floors above the PDS, I go into the holding cell to talk to the client. I ask out, and a white male, 3235, comes up. I introduce myself, tell him what, and who I am, etc. The first words out of his mouth were $600. I didn't know what that meant or what was going on. So I asked him to find out. What I quickly learned was that this client was mentally impaired. He spoke as if he struggled to form sentences that one may consider coherent and intelligent. During our conversation, he kept bringing up the fact that he didn't do anything and that he is paying, paying every month etc. And, probably due to my lack of experience, I kept trying to steer him towards the issue, why did he violate his probation conditions? It didn't even cross my mind that, hold on, maybe he did not actually do it. I left the cell, and talked with the public defender, told him the situation. Some time later, after handling a few other cases, as you who do it on a daily basis know, we went to talk to him again. This time, I just watched and listened. Immediately upon introducing himself, $600. I done paid it. Can't shake those words off. Throughout the discussion, the money was being brought up over and over so I decided to figure out what he meant. I went to the clerks, asked for his information. Now I understood, he had fees of over $2000 and all he had left to pay was $600. As probably all of you know, you don't pay, you are in violation. Back in the slammer. So, in his mind, he thought he was there, because he wasn't deemed to have paid. The reality was much worse and different. After a mini investigation, I determined the halfway house, or similar to the idea, he resided. I contacted the wonderful old woman who ran it if you will. She gave me details that this man, although he knew, could not regurgitate and express. Turns out his PO was a scumbag. He had gone to the halfway house, told our client what a piece of shit he was, and how he was a waste of DNA. He proceeded to go into the kitchen, sat down, and brought out his service firearm. Then, he ordered our client to go into the backyard. Our client did. P.O. told him to dig a grave for himself, and told him to use a P.O.'s gun to shoot himself in the head. All of this done in front of the old lady. On the day of the case, I called and she immediately came to testify for him. The judge dismissed the case. Found out later, the PO was sexually assaulting others, and was let go. Never had the chance, to meet him face to face. Shadowed on a personal injury case. 
their client was drinking in one of our guys bars and gets wasted, becomes abusive to staff, and then storms out, falls down the stairs. C6A should be in complete spinal injury severe loss of mobility and sensation. His people sue, and we force them to accept contributory negligence and personal liability. He gets an ok payout that covers his legal fees and immediate needs, and is left disabled. Even if it was seen to be his fault it was still hard thinking that his life will never be the same, just because of one rowdy night. Spinal injury care is massively expensive and the money he received wouldn't be sufficient for his whole life. I won a summary judgment motion that my firm filed not expecting to win. We had a decent argument, but odds were way worse than a coin flip, and judges don't like granting summary judgment, because it's an extreme remedy. Client initially was thrilled, case is over, we tried to break the news gently, nope. Three years later we are back in the same spot we were, before we won our motion. The other side appealed it up to the state supreme court and won, because the judge should have denied our motion. So, we are back at square one. North of dollar sign 100k in legal bills, with no resolution. Maybe it'll settle, maybe it will go to trial. I'll find out in the next 3 to 4 months. This probably won't be the best answer, but it is a real one. After law school I had to turn down a criminal defense job offer, because my wife got a better offer somewhere else. So basically, I followed her along, and was desperate to find something. After 3 months of fruitless efforts, I would take just about any job that required a JD, whereas literally the only thing I ever wanted to do was criminal defense. 3 months after moving I got an interview for a real estate litigation job. They hired me the next day, looking back that was probably red flag number 1. First day on the job they taught me how to foreclose on a claim of lien. These are two things I had never heard of before. Turns out, it is totally brainless work, if you have the right forms, mind-numbingly boring basically just cutting and pasting new addresses and amounts owed. So anyways, it took me about 2 months to realize this, when I had my first set of hearings, but literally my sole purpose at the firm, which represented over 100 homeowners associations, was to take people's houses away for not paying their homeowners association dues. After my first set of foreclosures, I actually slipped into a pretty legitimate depression. I was getting paid peanuts to drive nearly an hour to work every day to do work I despised on behalf of people I literally could not pretend to care about. The straw on the camel's back was when I started signing the foreclosures and realized I was that guy. Yeah no, I understand someone has to do the work I guess. There certainly is a lot of money to be made, but it was not for me. I did that job for 3 months, came home one Friday, and told my wife I'd rather be homeless than go back on Monday. By some stroke of luck, I started a stellar criminal defense job within 2 weeks and all of the heartache has 100% been worth it. I've won a lot of cases, you have to read a fiend winning and losing when doing criminal defense, because sometimes even a particularly juicy plea is a winamo, and never once felt bad about it. For example, I got a guy's plea deal cut from 60 years to 15 years for a string of robberies where the interrogations and confessions were overwhelmingly unconstitutional, like, the interrogations were textbook, how not to do an interrogation, Missouri v. Seabert, and stuff like that. Never lost sleep over someone not going to jail. So yeah, every case where I took someone's house away, probably two dozen times, for not paying her fees, generally $4,000 or less, was the worst case I ever won. Fuck house. Guy lost his wife and children in a car accident. He wanted to exercise to get his emotions and mental health back in check. Doctor wrote him recommendations for exercise equipment, ball, chin up bar, nothing crazy, and he submitted the expenses for same to his insurer. Client, insurer slash adjuster, wanted this for tooth and nail, because exercise equipment was only covered for physical rehab, and he was not physically injured. I do not practice in this area anymore. I do juvenile work, criminal law and family law. I represented this client first, when he was a juvenile charged with disorderly conduct at school and fighting, then when he became an adult it for was for simple things like possession of marijuana. As he got older, it became easier and easier to figure out what part of his life hasn't gone as well as it could, and I tried to counsel him, and push him to better himself. 
he got his ched, he started going to nap, he started classes at a community college, and found a part time job. On the night of his 21st birthday, he was charged with a dwi. Of course I'll take care of that too. About 6 months later, we are due in court for trial, on a Monday, and he doesn't show up, which at this point in his life is highly unusual. As I'm trying to figure out where he is, the court starts going over arraignment slash first appearances, and then lo, and behold three people are up for murder charges. The prosecution starts to tell the judge what the fact slash circumstances of the case are, and mentions a few victims names. Apparently, my client was at a party when these three individuals decided to allegedly do a drive-by shooting. My client suffered multiple gunshot wounds, and didn't make it to the hospital. So, by default, as you can't prosecute a dead person, the state has to take a dismissal. I guess technically a win. Either way, it was crushing to me as I thought he had really turned his life around. I have been a licensed attorney for 9 years and I'm fortunate to say that I have not had any cases that fit that bill. As others have mentioned, most civil cases settle and most criminal cases get plea bargained. It is subjective in those situations, what you call a win or a loss. I work in medical malpractice defense. Once I had a obstetrician slash gynecologist who burned a patient during a procedure. When I met with the doctor, he lied to me throughout the representation over 16 months saying he had no idea how it happened. There is a doctrine in law, called resipsa meaning absent some sort of negligence, this accident could not have occurred. Woman came in without a burn, and after the procedure, the woman left with a burn. There's no way this doctor, didn't know what had happened. The area of the burn was where he was operating on. It wasn't until I brought up settlement, because this was not a case we could win did he say, oh maybe I do know what happened. We ultimately settled that case, which is considered a favorable outcome considering the potential high monetary verdict. Sometimes I think this doctor really ought to have lost that case and their license.